what is up guys before we begin with the tutorial i just want to tell you that i have a giveaway that you can enter in order to win eight courses it's explained in this video that you currently see here link for this video is in the description below make sure you check it up so that you can see how you can enter for the competition and uh, good luck maybe you will win eight of my courses and uh, also enjoy the tutorial take care <laughs> Did you saw that intro? I mean, you did not see any better intro probably in your whole life. And anyways, Fahir here from awesometoots.com. Here we are back with our simple 3D game. Now, some of you guys are going to be like, well, technically, this is not a 3D game. It's a mix of virtual reality put into 2D. No, it's a 3D game. Okay, do not argue with me. But before we continue, just go and check out the project here on Indiegogo, I've been rambling about it, it's gonna be awesome, great, and you will not only support the creation of this project, but the creation of more tutorials. I do plan to cover a first-person shooter here on YouTube, completely free, of course, so yeah, it's a lot of work, so... I mean, at least share it so that other people can see, other people's, other people can see and probably somebody will back it up. So now let's go and back up our project right here. So we have this weird floor and whatnot. So now what we need to do is add our pumpkin, which is located here into the models and here pumpkin folder here we have a single pumpkin i'm gonna put it right here and here it is look at the crazy little dude look at how big he is so we do need to well we need to change that select the pumpkin first here in the hierarchy and i'm gonna change his name from simple or single pumpkin to simply pumpkin and set his scale for the x y and z at 0.1 Point one, point one. This is what we need. Exactly this. I mean, who does not need this? And let me just bring the dude up. Come on, go outside. Put him here where he is. Here it is. And we do need to rotate him because I want to see his face. But let me first zoom in and rotate him on the Y axis. 180 degrees. And here is the little bastard's face. What is wrong with me with the little bastard? I need to stop saying that and we don't have materials for this dude what we need to do is we do need to what we need to do is we do need to we just click on the drop down list for the pumpkin you have sphere and sphere zero one sphere is i think the top of him yeah it's the top as you can see when i turn it off you don't see his head and i am simply gonna take this shader that is here which is standard i'm gonna click here where it says albedo near it you have the color and i'm gonna change his color whoa this is for the whole dude so i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna change the brown top so let me go and uh, which color do we want yeah this is the one that we want the brownish this is okay and probably let me just take this one and go here let me just see what will change yeah everything else will change but we can also change the color under sphere not sphere dot zero zero one because we have this orange and we have the brown top let me just go here click on albedo and you see me you see here what i'm doing so let me just change it like this i want this is the color of my pumpkin and i do not care this is what I want. This is the pumpkin that I wanted. Let me just select the pumpkin and move it a little bit here because this is from where we are going to start and double tap on it to zoom on the little dude. And now let me just add some components before we start scripting. Yes, we are going to script. Finally, finally we'll script. But before that, I need to add the sphere collider. So you type or you type it S P H and here it is sphere. We do need to resize it. So let me zoom in, see where the sphere is and put the center at 0.5, which will bring it at the middle, I think. And let me just the radius. I need to bring it a little bit up even more. So like this. Put it down just a little bit. I think we're good to go. But zoom in a little again. This is the technical things that I hate doing, you know. This is the... It must be done, but let me just resize it again. And there is no 
I don't know, like, always use this number and it will be okay. No, it will not be okay. You need to test it out until you have everything working and blah, blah, blah. So I'm also gonna go and click on add component and attach a rigid body on it. So this time it's only a rigid body. Again, I'm gonna go here, rigid body, not rigid body 2D because 2D or rigid body 2D is for 2D games. So don't use a rigid body 2D, instead only use a rigid body, which is for 3D games. And this is a problem that I see a lot of people have. So they come to me like my game is not working, and he's creating a 2D game, so my game is not working, and I go in his project and he added a rigid body instead of rigid body 2D. So here, you will do vice versa if you make a mistake, of course. So instead of adding a rigid body, if you add a rigid body 2D, it will not work at all. Moving forward, I'm gonna go here, right click into the assets and create a prefabs folder. So prefabs, and I'm gonna drag and drop the pumpkin, of course. So let me go here, create a new folder, which I'm gonna call pumpkin prefabs. Why did I think that it is called a pumpkin G? So G at the end, it's a pumpkin, not a pumpkin. And let me go and create another folder, which is gonna be our script. So scripts. Inside of this folder, I'm gonna right click, right click and create a new folder, pumpkin, so pumpkin, scripts, and let me just go back again, create a new C-sharp script, which I'm gonna call pumpkin, of course. I mean, what else or how otherwise should I call it? So attach it, simply drag and drop it and put it on the pumpkin, double click on it and open it in a mono develop. So let me just add here class to tag the class, and you know what I'm doing this, I am doing this for a reason. Anyways, going back here, let me remove the comments. Also remove the comment here for the start. And now let's start coding. So we do need a public float, which is the move force, which I'm going to say is equal to 10 by default. We can change it in the inspector panel because we set it to be public and notice automatically here we have it in the inspector panel. Moving forward, we do need a rigid body. So we can either type it to be public. So we can say public rigid body. I'm gonna call it my body. And end the statement. So it can either be an I run the script. Well, yeah, just turn it off. Anyways, we can set it to be public, which will make it visible here in the inspector panel. We can even drag and drop the pumpkin itself here from the hierarchy, or we can drag and drop the rigid body component from the pumpkin itself, or we can simply make it private. And then inside of our awake, and I'm a big fan of the awake function in comparison to the star function, because awake will be called first and after awake on enable will be called and after that start will be called. But initially in awake and start, you will initialize your variables. But in awake function, that is my personal preference. I like to use get component and game object find to find the game objects and get the component. So here my body is equal to get component passing the rigid body component and we are good to go. So now we have the rigid body, we have the move force. What we need to do is we need to create the move function. So I'm gonna create a void, move the pumpkin. So move the pumpkin and I'm gonna call that in fixed update. Not in the update, but fixed update. And if you wanna know the difference, well, fixed update is called every other frame. Even though recently I read in documentation that the fixed update is called more frequently than update. Update is called once per frame. So if we have 60 frames in a second, it will be called 60 times in a second. But as I said, I already read in the official documentation that fixed update is called more times then update, which is weird, but you can also change that. I believe you can go here into edit and project settings. Was that for physics? Let me just take a look at it. No, it's not for physics. I think it's for time. So edit project settings time. And here we have fixed time step, maximum allowed time scale. 
I think somewhere around here, I will double check it again and see. But that will be weird because everybody, even Unity official documentation or Unity officials are telling us to put all the physics code inside of the fixed update. If that is called more than the update, then we will have a problem. But hey, I'm just rambling and let us go and code. So in the fixed update, we're going to call move the pumpkin, move the pumpkin. And in order to move it, we need to get the float H. So float H for horizontal movement is equal to input dot get axis. It is going to be horizontal like this. And we are going to also have, I'm going to copy and paste the code. Instead of H, we're going to have V, which is for vertical and change it also here. Vertical. So change the parameter. And I think we already did this in some other games. So in order to move it left and right now, Interestingly enough, in order to move the pumpkin left and right, up and down, we will not use the Y axis for up and down. Instead, we will use the Z axis. Why? Because this is a 3D game. So far, we, will wor we were working on 2D games. And if I take the pumpkin, notice this is this blue line is the Z axis. And if you move it, you will see that the Z axis is actually moving the values right here in the inspector. So moving in forward is on the Z, moving it backwards is on the Z. Up and down is Y. In comparison to 2D where we would use Y for moving forward and, or actually X is forward and backward, but X here is left and right. As you can see, forward and backward is the Z axis. So going back here, we need to say my body that add force and apply here a new vector three, which is going to be H for vertical multiplied by move force, comma zero for the Y axis. I'm going to say zero F and vertical multiplied by the move force on the Z axis. And this is going to move our pumpkin. So let us check that out. Let me just put the pumpkin a little bit here. If I hit the play button, we will see that we can, or we will be able to move the pumpkin. Notice the pumpkin is moving. And just a second, let me plug in my battery and whatnot charger and the pumpkin fell down. Anyways, take a look at a pumpkin. So here it is. It's moving like crazy, you know, like a drunk guy. <laughs> look at that. Look at the little bastard. What is wrong with me and the little bastard? I really should. I'm not going to say that from now on. When I think of Little Bastard, I'm going to just going to shut up. So notice here, it is moving and whoa, 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 I cannot control it. It fell down. Anyways, you can see we are moving it left and right up and down. Notice on the X axis, left and right, pushing the V axis, V axis or the W key or S key or up and down arrow is going to move it forward as you can see. And that was about that for this video. I'm just going to put the pumpkin to roll down because look at, the, look at the pumpkin and it fell down. So this was it for this guys. This was it for this. This was the, this was it for this video guys. And I'm going to catch in the next one where we're going to continue with our game before I go fire here from awesome Check out the project here. Share it with others on your Facebook. You probably have some friends who want to learn to code. It was an, it is, it is the best time to learn how to create games and where else can you learn except with awesome toots? So, uh, that's it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.